So in this demo, I'm just going to quickly show you how to use the new uh, SSD read caching that is built into vSphere 5.5, and it's pretty simple. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this of course is the web interface, everything now, all the new cool stuff has to be done in the web UI, kind of like it was with 5.5, or I'm sorry, 5.1, and there we go. So I'm going to use Bumblebee. Uh, all the hosts in my lab have both a Samsung 840 Pro SSD and a spinning drive in them. So we're going to use the SSD for caching. So we'll go over to Manage. You want to go to Settings, scroll down to the bottom, and Flash Read Cache. So we'll go to here, Flash Read Cache Resource Management. You'll see that sometimes used, FRCRM. And what you want to do is add capacity. So we will go click that. And it's going to look and see if there's any drives that can be used. So it's going to tell you right here, it's going to format it, and all your data is going to be gone, so make darn sure this is what you want to do. And if you have multiple SSDs in here, you can use those absolutely. I only have one, so that's what we'll use. Say OK. Give it a second, and it'll populate with the capacity and all the information. So then what you can do from here is uh, you may want to use some of this for swap cache, kind of like what we've been able to do uh, with 5.1 and you can do that as well so as soon as this thing gets through configuring itself we'll take a look at that there we are shows our capacity and you can expand these out total provisioned and free and tells you how much you have for uh, the actual read caching and VFS let's see and that's the flash file system that it uses and right here you have all your devices it shows you which ones and you can always, if you want to disable this, come up here and do a remove and remove all your devices. You just need to make sure that you don't have any VMs using the cache or it won't let you remove it. So you have to disable it on the VMs and then come and remove it. And as I mentioned, here's your cache configuration so we can use it for host swap cache. You would just hit edit, enable it, and specify how much of the overall space you want to use for host swap. So it's not an either or. Uh, you can have a 400 gig SSD in your server and use 100 of it for host swap and 300 for read cache, whatever you want to do. Completely up to you. Um, but that's how you configure those. And if you don't want to do any read caching, you still have to enable it and then come in here and just dedicate all of it to host swap. So now let's go look at a VM. I'm actually going to use my domain controller. That's the one that happens to be right there. And a word here, it needs to be, let's see, wait for it. VM version 10. So if you're not 10, you're not going to see these options, so make sure of that. So right click, edit some settings, and if you go down and expand, what am I looking for? Hard drive, right there, you'll see flash read cache. So a couple of things, you can just punch in a number if you want to. You can click advanced and hit enable. If you just punch in a number and hit OK, it automatically enables and sets this stuff. But you can come in here and set your size, you know, 10 gig, there you go, and set your uh, block size. So I talked about the block size in the blog post. Block size kind of designates how large of a flash cache you can use. So you'll just need to make sure of that, um, set it to what you want. There's more settings here, oddly enough, than what I saw in the documentation, which is what I put in my blog post. So I don't have all the rest of these. I'll update that as soon as I can. But let's see, 8, I think I'll need to go 16 for that. So we'll say OK, and we'll say OK. We'll see if it actually works. Yep. Uh, the reason I say we'll see if it actually works is if you don't do something correctly, and I'll give you an idea of that right here, it just comes back and says, and says um, well, it gives you generic error. Hold on, I'll tell you what the error is. Because one of the things is you can't give it more cache. And i got to bump my block size for this but you can't give it more cache than the VM has disk space. So it's not going to say, hey, here's 800 gig of cache for a 200 gig VM. And if you say OK, it's going to go it, it's going to do it, and it's going to come back with an error. It says operation is not supported on the object. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't tell me a whole lot. If I mess anything up, if I set a really big uh, cache size and a really small block size, guess what error it gives me? The same error. So if you mess up, you get to figure out what the combination is. Uh, another thing is, let's see, oh, if you add a hard drive, um, let me set this back to like five. I don't need a block size quite that large. 
but if you add a hard drive, let's say I added a 200 gig hard drive to this this VM, and I only have 120 gig hard, uh, 120 gig Samsung SSD in my server, but I said okay, you get uh, you know five gig on this one, but the other one's really important, so it's a 200 gig volume. I'm gonna let you cache the whole thing if you can. So 200 gig, it'll come back and say sorry, you don't have enough capacity to do that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this mainly because it requires way too much manual intervention for me to set up the amount of caching I want on a per VM basis. There are other tools out there, you know, um, Extreme SW from EMCs, the Pernix Data, which is a really great product. Uh, I got a post on it if you haven't seen it. Those are much more dynamic, uh, meaning you can turn it on for all your VMs and allocate space accordingly. This is a little bit too much manual intervention for me, but you know what, it's included in the product it works it's kind of built around specifying specific VMs that you want to do but again it's I don't know it, it is what it is If we come back we'll say we provision so it already had like 900 meg if you saw it the first time and it shows us that we have another five and that's what we have free so just something else to keep in mind when you uh, vMotion VMs and I don't know if it'll let me do it since I don't have it enabled on my other VMs but you can change your host where you want it to go yeah see it's gonna complain and say hey you can't do this because you don't have enough uh, space on the other guys to do this so it's just not let's see if we say next it's gonna say uh-uh yeah see if it'll let us continue nope page data is invalid which is yet another useful one so next and so what I, I just selected the same host it's not going to go anywhere but this is what I wanted to show it show you so you can say I want you to migrate the cache or do not migrate the cache uh, pros and cons of course if you migrate the cache you don't have to rewarm it up if you and then you can go through and set on a VM by VM basis if you have multiple VMs and if you say do not migrate cache you know uh, it speeds up your vMotions it doesn't throw all that data across the wire but you have to rewarm your cache so it just depends on what you want to do uh, but it does give you the option and I, I admit I do like that um, you know some it just depends because this is not as robust as say a Pernix data Pernix data if you vMotion a VM to another host it does not vMotion the cache but it can request cache hits across the wire from the other host and the benefit there is it's pulling it off of flash or SSD very quick not off your back-end storage array so you kinda get the best of both worlds this is kinda the you know that kinda compromise where you can move the contents but you don't have to but as you saw you have to move it to a system with enough flash resources again too much manual intervention I feel like if I move it to another one maybe it'll warn me but it says hey I'm gonna move it I don't have any space over there or I don't have enough space just a heads up but I still want to do it uh, I don't want to trap myself somewhere where I gotta go undo this on some VMs to take some host down for a maintenance or an emergency so again yeah that could be a little better but all in all it's a good product I consider it to be version one feature set and I'm sure it's gonna get better again it's gonna be included and I think you know people will get a lot of value of it you'll you'll start seeing more SSDs and servers for things like this we'll start seeing more flash built onto motherboards for things like this and I'll tell you you know running it in production and custom environments I run uh, this during the beta time and Pernix data almost all the time in my lab these types of local caching solutions make a huge difference on your performance especially if you don't have the most powerful array behind your your environment you know my lab here is a five disc RAID 5 Synology box great box not gonna throw out a lot of IOPS but using these type of tools man it, it makes a big big difference so that's it for the demo uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one